Hello everyone, and welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. Now, last week, Lafroy 10 Sherry Cask, 10 out of 10. Big score. Um, the biggest score we've given in a while. The Bowmore 18 Fair Isle was a nine and a half prior to that. This was a bottle split with a friend of mine, who Mike, who lives and works in London, and he found this on a shelf, I think for like 50 quid. Maybe a little bit over retail. I think the retail on this is like 46, 47. But he found it. We were both a bit broke, so we agreed to split it. You all know of my love for Kilcarran 12, um, whiskey of the year, for last year, this year? Last year. And I've never tried any of the peated stuff until this beautiful bottle here. Now, in terms of the facts of this one, this is batch number four. This is Kilcarran heavily peated. It's 58.6%. It's matured in oak, most of which, based on the colour, we will assume is mostly bourbon. There's probably like maybe 20-30% sherry cask in there. And it was peated prior to distillation to 84 phenol parts per million, which is pretty high. It's only really Optimal that goes higher than that. But we do have to remember it's before distillation, so that would have killed it probably by at least 50%. So we're sat on the 40 ppm mark, which is still very, very high. All of those facts and figures sound wonderful. It's natural cash strength, it's natural color, it's natural filtered, it's got a huge peat level. It's mostly bourbon cask matured, which is right up my street. And this has been open for, God, when did we split this? May? So a long time. And I've been waiting for the right situation to review it. And as we get from summer into autumn, because it'll be the end of September when this video comes out, this seems like the right time to review this whiskey. So, nose. Don't need to spend a lot of time with that. Even with that massive PPM and ABV count, the nose on that is one of the sweetest, most welcoming things I've ever come across. It's loads of toffee and fudge and vanilla, kind of like baked cheesecake stuff. And then in the background, you've got this kind of lurking, shadowy smoke, which is kind of waiting to come out and drive at you. There's, oh, that's unusual. I've never got that on this before. There's almost like a juniper note in the back of that. Like really floral, kind of bittersweet floral. Loads of apple skin. Specifically as a kid, I think this is more of an English thing or a British thing than it is an American thing. Um, when I was a kid at Halloween, you used to do like, like a bob for apple. Like you'd get like a huge, vessel, fill it with water, and you'd put apples in it and you had to like grab an apple with your teeth. Um, there is a smell of that with this. Not like the frustration of having your head pushed in the water by your older brother, but just the smell of like apples covered in water. But it has so much vanilla, so much fudge. You can almost like chew on the smell. Banana, like a really nice kind of caramelly banana note. I've never said like the, the nose on this is thick and creamy, but it really does. There's even like a peanut butter thing on it. Just indulgent, you know? Taste. Ooh, that is a slow burner. That's like the whiskey version of Sopranos. That takes a while to get going, but once it does, you are involved. Um, okay, so initial arrival is actually, I don't want to use the word underwhelming because that's a negative, but it's so soft. Like you're kind of waiting for something to happen. The creamy vanilla, the banana, the fudge, the toffee, the butterscotch, even honeycomb to a degree. The very, very tip of the tongue, very like trebly, like high frequency flavor profile. And then as you kind of swill it around the palate, that really dies off. And the smoke, it arrives very gentlemanly, 
it's not like a huge thrashing of smoke like with Ardbegs and some Laphroaigs. It just kind of appears out of nowhere and kind of swirls around your mouth. And it takes away the sweetness and replaces it with fresh sea salt, a little bit of seaweed, almost like a very bitter endive type of, type of flavor. And then as you swallow the whiskey, the combination of the ABV and the smoke leaves this layer on your tongue of like minerally chalky, almost like smoked meat flavor profile. Yeah, the minerally thing. Even when I went back to smell it very briefly then, that chalky element, I could just be because it's in my sort of, my sensory um, organs now, but the nose of that fudge and that almost like banoffee pie, creamy sweetness. If you gave that to someone who didn't like peated whiskey, they'd almost be like, oh, I'm game, like, absolutely. It's like a fuller, more intense version of Elsa Bay. So, like, I like Elsa Bay, but this is just like, whew. But at the same time, it's also really subtle. So layered and gentle. And even though it's, you know, natural cash strength and all that other good stuff, it's not kind of slapping you around the palate with flavor. It's gently pulling you into it. To be fair, I only bought half a bottle and it's been open for a very long time. So there's a lot of oxygen got to it. It could have changed the first glass from this, I bet, is an absolute like raucous experience if you own a full bottle of it. But for me, where that's sat right now, that is a, a, a gently layered complex, a whiskey of multitudes in many different ways. Unfortunately, it's fully sold out and a lot of it ended up on auction, which for a whiskey of that quality is a genuine true shame. But much like the Laphroaig 10 Sherry cask of last week, I can only give that a 10. Unfortunately, it's not available. It's better than the Beaumont 18 Fay Isle. And that whiskey blew my mind, like genuinely blew my mind. The Laphroaig 10 Sherry from last week blew my mind too, because not only does it have all of these complex flavors and nostalgic Laphroaiginess, it's also very available and very affordable. This isn't available, but it is affordable when it's around, but the level of complexity within it is almost unfathomed to quite a degree. So for a year of having almost no tens, we've now had two in a row. So Kilkerran heavily peated batch four. I'll be chasing batch five like an absolute demon whenever it gets released. Um, but this channel has now tried two Kilkerran releases and they've both been given tens. One unpeated, one extremely heavily peated, one 46%, one cash strength. And I think that tells you quite a lot about that distillery. Not that I need to praise Campbelltown anymore, because uh, Lord knows it's already difficult enough to get hold of whiskies from that region, but honestly outstanding, genuinely outstanding. So two weeks in a row, two tens. Thank you all for watching. Um, if you've any of you got batch one, two, three, four, uh, would be intrigued to know your tasting notes, your opinions on it. Um, this still says Pete in progress. So there's no age on this. We have no idea what age it is. Um, with the previous in progress range from Kilkerran slash Glengyle, they went from four years old all the way up to, I think, nine or ten. So this could probably be sat in the middle of that, five, six years old. Um, but yeah, if any of you knew, do know any more details, I'd be very intrigued to know. But thank you all very much for watching. It's another ten from me. It's like buses, isn't it? None of them come along and then loads of them come along at once. But yeah, I'll see you all next week. Have a good week. Cheers.